The Design Tour has traveled to Sarasota, Florida for an all-access tour of iconic mid-century modern architecture. You're getting a rare look inside homes designed by some of the 20th century's most renowned modernist architects. Hi, I'm Karen LeBlanc, and I'm the Design Tourist, a new breed of traveler in search of global inspiration, unique design finds, and the most brilliant design minds. I take you behind the scenes and give you VIP access to some of the world's premier design destinations, events, and shows. Together, we'll discover destinations with a design story to tell. Come travel with us in style on The Design Tourist. Today we're going to take a self-guided tour of several iconic mid-century modern properties in Sarasota and the city has made it easy for us. They've detailed a lot of these properties in this book. Our tour begins in Lido Shores. It was developed by visionary Philip Hiss. Now Hiss had an idea to create modernist homes that would attract attention. So I'm driving through the neighborhood of Lido Shores. It has one of the largest concentration of modernist homes by the Sarasota School of Architecture. Now this, this spec home, the Umbrella House, was basically the billboard advertising this development. The home is undergoing some renovation and preservation right now, but you get a sense of it. Lido Shores, I met up with Christopher Wilson. He is an architecture and design historian with Ringan College of Art and Design to talk about some of the significant properties here and one of which we're standing in front of. Yes, this is the Hargavy House by Paul Rudolph, 1958. And um, it's the second uh, building that he constructed on Lido Shores. And soon afterwards, he left Sarasota and went and became the, uh, the chair of the Department of Architecture at Yale University. Oh, and so let's talk about some of the distinguishing features of this particular home. Um, well, like most Paul Rudolph designs, he sets up a grid um, into which everything fits. So when you look at, uh, across the facade, there are, I think it's five bays. Um, and, and then that's carried through in plan back into uh, the rest of the house and everything fits within that grid. The Harkavy House is listed on the self-guided tour of Sarasota's modernist architecture. Once a year, similar homes are open for public tour during Sarasota Mod. It's sponsored by the Sarasota Architectural Foundation and it's a rare opportunity to experience up close the significant architectural movement and its influence. The thing about Serso School of Architecture, it's a regional variation of modern architecture. It was between the 1940s and 1960s. And what it did was it kind of adapted the European modernism of the 20s and 30s for the Florida climate. We will see in this, in the Hargaby House, opening sliding panels, that, the screens, letting in the air, and really just kind of because in Florida you can live all year round, right. more or less, with, with the outside. The total blurring of the inside and outside, mm -hmm. um, uh, which you cannot do up in the, in the northern climates. So here's a clever architectural detail I wanted to point out. Look at these concrete balls at the base. Rudolph created them by filling a beach ball with concrete as a mold, and then he slit the beach ball, and voila, the base for the columns around the home. The Ghoul House, built by Philip Hiss in 1955, sits across the street from the Harkavy House. A privacy wall hides the facade from the street, but step inside and the decor is an homage to all the iterations of mid-century modern interior style. A typical mid-century modern home was between 1,000 and 1,500 square feet. Considered small by today's standards, but mid-century modern is not just a style, it's a mindset. 
a post-war optimism and desire to declutter and experiment with technology and modern materials. It must have been exciting times well, because... Well, it was paradise mm -hmm. uh, for a young architect because uh, Paul was taught by Gropius and Paul taught me, so you, you, know, you understood where all that came from and you understood how Paul had adapted the Bauhaus aesthetic to the Florida climate. Edward Tim Siebert is one of the pioneering architects of Sarasota School of Architecture movement. Siebert began his career as a draftsman for Lido Shores developer Philip Hiss. I met up with Siebert at Philip Hiss Studio, formerly the headquarters and sales office where Siebert worked as a draftsman. This building has a steel frame, which was very unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, you notice the ceiling tiles, which are, were put up there in 1953, and they're still good. The cork, the cork floor is flooring. still good. And, uh, the and original the, lighting. The original is <laughs> holding up pretty well. Right. And uh, so I, my office in the end was in this building back there. Mm -hmm. And one of the perquisites was I was allowed to read Phil's books. Prior to developing Lido Shores, Hiss was an amateur anthropologist who studied in Bali in the West Indies. This raised pavilion is inspired by the stilted vernacular architecture of Bali that captured natural breezes, even though the studio itself had air conditioning to protect its art and book collection from the moisture and salty air of the island. Today, his studio is the residence of Bob and Julie Garvin. They were gracious enough to invite me into their home for Siebert's interview and a personal tour. In 1962, the building was converted to a residence for the Hiss family by adding ground-level accommodations on the building lot behind the studio, linked by a shaded courtyard. Our next stop is the Mitchell House. It was designed by architect Tim Siebert. And this is a great full circle story because the present day owners of the home are Sam and Pam Holiday. Sam worked with Tim at Siebert Architects and later took over the architecture practice when Tim retired. He and his wife worked together. So come on in and they are going to give us a personal tour of the Mitchell House. Thank you, thanks for having us. Come on inside. So, this is our courtyard entry, which we love and was certainly original to the house. And when we bought it, part of this screen trellis was here, but this was not. Oh. And so we had it lovingly rebuilt to replicate what was originally designed by Tim back in the day. Well, first of all, I would love for you to open up yes. the space so we can see. Sure. The Mitchell House is 1,300 square feet, but lives much larger with sliding walls that open up, infusions of natural light, and an open floor plan centered around a courtyard. It's uh, all built on a, a, a module, mm -hmm. and the module is these, these beams up in here, six feet wide, and by the length of them, the 16 feet, the entire house is on that module. So Karen, this is our main space, and as you can see, it's designed with an open plan like we would today. So as I've told Tim Siebert many times, this is so viable for today's lifestyle for us. We cook, and this works for entertaining, um, original hood, original for Micah, oh, original cooktop. <laughs> so this is our office, and I use the term office lightly because we don't do a lot of work in here, but it's a good reading space and a good online space. And again, it has this wonderful connection to the courtyard and the outside and makes the room feel twice as big. It has this funky light that- Which I love. Yes, <laughs> is quite vintage as you can imagine. And Oh, so very practical. Our next stop is the Revere Quality House. Now, it was commissioned in 1948 by the Revere Quality House Institute, an architectural forum, a magazine. It was meant to be a show home, and it was designed by architects Paul Rudolph and Ralph Twitchell. They were in partnership at the time. Now, the home became emblematic of modern design in Florida, and it was one of eight prototypes. 
So the home was built out of poured in place concrete, which at the time was uh, structural technology that was very advanced. And if you look closely, you'll see that the original colors have been preserved. We have burnt red for the steel columns, and above me we have peacock blue. The design was very forward thinking at the time. You are looking at the ancestor to modern day lanai's. And basically there were two glass walls that surrounded a roof with a cutout that had a screen enclosure. So you had this seamless merger of the inside and the outside, which is a defining feature of the Sarasota School of Architecture. And this is one of my favorite features in the home. This is a copper hood and it's shared both by the fireplace and on the other side by the kitchen. The Revere Quality House was a copper company and you'll remember they commissioned the home, hence the copper. Come over here and I'll show you a look at the kitchen. Behind me is the Healy Guest House, also known as the Cocoon House, and it was also built by Paul Rudolph and Ralph Twitchell. Now, the name the Cocoon House comes from the unique roofing system that Paul Rudolph designed. He used steel cables suspended and then coated with a plastic coating that created kind of a plastic mesh. It was a technology that he discovered while in the Navy during World War II, the same technology the Navy used to envelop its ships after they returned from battle. My tour of Sarasota's iconic mid 20th century architecture continues in episode two with one of the most photographed buildings in the world and more, so keep watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.